Hi, welcome to Chigwell Building and Joinery. This is video number two of our 3D tutorial. This video might be the longest video out of them all because we will actually do a design of the whole room, bringing the furniture in, etc., making final adjustments and oversizes and everything else. So, previously we had brought the cabinet in just in order to save the project. So, now that cabinet is not needed. Let's get rid of it. I just had to do it. Um, the actual project, if we look at the actual project, this is what we have to build. So we had the boxings, etc. We require a tall cabinet where internally this is what we need. So adjustable shelf, hanging, shoe shelf, uh, a drawer, pull out, tabletop, a couple of cabinets, overhead cabinets, etc. Scribing side fillers, so on and so on. So this is the design that we need to achieve and this is what we'll do on this video. So let's get rid of this. We have our room. Let's go into our library. Right, so the cabinet that we required had a hanging rail and a shoe shelf. All we need to do is go through our templates, which library keeps on growing and growing. It probably will never end. So this is the type of cabinet that we require. I've always obviously prepared some measurements, so it will be easier for me because I've got them. So this cabinet required to be 800 millimeters wide, 580 deep for normal hanging, height 1800. Now we need to position it, making sure we can fit it because the feet was only 100 mil, and the skirting in the room, I think. Let me just double check. Right, we had 160 millimeter skirting. Okay, so we can change it so we can see if we're doing everything okay or not. 60 and 160. Now, as the cabinet feet or height of the plinth of the cabinet itself is only 100 millimeters, we can't really push this cabinet close to the wall. So we'll need to allow some tolerances. If you press control and left click of the mouse and hold it, you can actually move the whole project or the whole 3D. And now let's do some positioning of this cabinet here. So I want to leave myself some clearance, probably I would say 25 millimeters away from this box here. So we had this at 170 plus 25, so 195 and we'll leave ourselves 20 millimeters at the back. Then, to make life quick and easy, we just keep keep banging the units in, so to say, and then we'll go through changing the materials, etc. So all we need is another cabinet to go above it, which, going back to the library, we're gonna be using wall hung cabinets, uh, shelving unit, this is the one that we're after, so we know this cabinet was 1800 tall, so that means for this cupboard, it's going to need to be 1800 off the floor. And the height, the width is going to be 800, as previously. Depth will have to go 580. Height of this cabinet will be 750. Yet again, I need to change the height of the floor as it changes from center to center. Positioning, so it's quicker for me going the numeric way. So we do 170 plus 25, 195. And we need to make sure it's 20 millimeters away from the wall. That's it, we've got one of these units. We're gonna need a few more of these. So again, all we need to do is drag them in. And we drag another one in, so we've got two of them. So, now, how do we finish? If you look at it closely, like zooming in, I've got clearance to the skirting. All I need is a scribe. So, if I click on the unit. If you start going through these options here, this is where the whole magic happens. So, we've got the door. Door quantity 2, door type 
plain shaker, shaker flat, plain finger J, finger, plain finger pocket, etc., etc. These are all various options for either routed handle details or, or shaker doors, etc., which, based on your selection, there will be a limited amount of materials which we will allow you to change due to due to limitations that you cannot do a J profile handle on the Melamine board. It can only be done on MDF. So that means we will only allow you to choose the MDF. Hinge placement, left and right. We can switch the hinges off. That means you might be able to do the hinges yourself on site. Maybe you're doing something else and you don't know exactly where the hinge is going to work out. But if you're not doing any other modifications within the cabinet itself, left and right, that's what you need. Door bottom overhang, we can overhang the door to make it look like it's going to the floor. So plinth is 100, let's do 80. And if you look at the 3D, the door drop down. In this instance, we don't need it. Uh, door top overhang, again, we can overhang the door to the top. In this instance, we can't do. Some instances, we need to. So because it's bespoke, all these options are available. Fixed shelf. Again, we can choose fitting options, push in, which is concealed. It can be cam fixings, could be rafix, could be cam fixing with a downstand, rafix with a downstand, push in downstand. Again, lots of options. Now, what we need is the end panels and scribes. So, left side, we need a scribe. So, we add the scribe. We know that the cabinet above was 750 millimeters wide. So, top overhang will be 750 to be flush with the top of the cabinet. And the plinth is not going to the wall. We still need to overcome these boxings and to make it look good. So, what we need to do, we had 195. So, let's say allowing ourselves a little bit extra. Let's do 210. That covers, covers the wall. And if we rotate, it's slightly proud of the wall. So that might be enough for us to scribe. Uh, right side, we need a side panel. Scribe shift. Okay, that's another one. Every single side panel and scribing pieces, they will be flush with the front of the carcass. If we need to make it flush with the door, I know that the material we're going to be using will be 19 millimeters for the doors and the 2 millimeter gap between the door and the carcass. So that means visually, it's not going to do anything to manufacture, but visually, I need to shift it 19 plus 2, 21. And now it says flush with the door. So this side is done. On the right hand side, we need to allow for a side panel which we go to right side, end panel. Now, again, end panel is only the height of the carcass, which is 1800. And we need to extend it to the top. So front overhang, again, we have doors 19 plus two will be 21. We will change materials later, but I know them in advance. Right side, back overhang. Now, looking at the back, it's a little bit short. So if I zoom in closer, see, we have a gap to the wall. So I need to allow back overhang. Maybe it's going to be 20 millimeters, maybe 30, depending on the walls, how the cabinet will sit. So maybe I'll allow myself 30 millimeters at the back, which again is for cutting on site, as none of the walls are straight. Some are, some ain't. Right side, top overhang. So again, top overhang. We know that it's 750 millimeters. That's it. We finished here. Now we can modify the other unit, which based on the drawings, it was supposed to have a divider. Okay, we'll change it to a divider, not a problem. Okay, so the width of this cabinet, according to my calculations, was working out 926 wide. Uh, height wise 711 because we're going to be dropping the doors down in order to allow a handle free opening and we're going to be using another panel underneath to dress everything up so the cabinet height 1800 off the floor plus 
1800 plus, we had a difference 750 minus 711, so it was 39 millimeters. So 1839. That's it. Now I can just bring it in. When the snapping happens, we the software itself only sees the carcass. It does not see the side panel. So now if we look at it, based on calculations, because the side panel will be 19 millimeters and the cabinet itself 195 away from the wall. So what we do, 195 plus the width of the cabinet, which is 800 plus the side panel will be 19 millimeters. So we do plus 19 equals 1014. So here we just set it 1014 and the cabinet was supposed 20 mil away from the wall, which we have, that's it. Now, in order to make the doors look in line, we go into doors, door type plane, hinging, bottom overhang size. According to my calculations, it should be 40 millimeters. We can zoom in to check if we are there. Yes, that's exactly what we need. So now that I've done modification on this cabinet, instead of going through the same mods on the other one, let's delete this one. Okay. And we were supposed to have a mid divider on this cabinet. Now I I know I've got a adjustable shelving cabinet, so if I go interchange, I can use divider and fix shelves, divide and adjustable shelves. If you just click on it, it happens instantly, you can't even see, but it has actually happened. To check if it has happened, we go to view mode and we can open the doors. Now doors will open only if you have selected hinges. If there are no hinges, the doors will not open. Okay, so we have a little bit too many shelves, which we need to change. Okay, now that we've looked at it. Let's go back to edit mode and let's make our final adjustments. So doors are fine here. Shelves, we might need only two number. And if we go here, again, we need only two. And next step, we can copy another unit, which we could just bring in like this. It's going to be exactly what we have preset on this one. Saves us typing in all the dimensions and overhangs etc but I don't want to copy it yet because I want to change the material so I don't need to do it twice so if I click on this cabinet and if I go to materials door material based on our drawings the spec was Egger U702 PM cashmere gray which is perfect match so now you can type in name numbers we search the whole database. So let's go U702 and PM. And it brings out the material. Done. So door material is changed. Carcass material, we were supposed to have something slightly cheaper. So it was ST. I don't know the number, but right, U07. U702ST9. Okay, that's our carcass. Now, because we type this number here, every time we select on the material, it always stays there. So now, instead of going back and changing to PM, I'm going to go through all the other items. So, carcass material, ST. Let's go here. Again, carcass material, search, ST9. Now, if we go back to this cabinet and we don't want to do extensive search, we can just type in the name, copy, and we still have a material to change, which is the cladding. Cladding means side panels, blimps, uh, scribes, etc., etc. So in a way, I can use three different materials to build one cabinet. So if I paste it here, search, that's my cladding, again making my life easier. So I've got the same material. I'll go and do this here and here. Done. Now, the only thing I haven't done is added the plinth to this cabinet, which is quite easy. And that's going to go under the same material as the cladding. So if you scroll down, P 
plinth, yes. Now again, plinth has the same, if for instance, we were to have a cabinet next to it, we want a continuous plinth. So I can say right overhang, maybe the same cabinet, 800 millimeters. And the plinth will extend to make sure that you don't have 10, 10 different plinth pieces to, to make up the whole run. We don't need it here, so we do it zero. Yet again, bottom overhang, maybe the floor is level, maybe it's not, maybe you're gonna bring it down. Again, you can type in the values, increase, increase the plinth height, which is going below the floor, which can be cut later. So at this point, we don't need to do that. Now, top. Top for this cabinet, we can't do anything, but we need to do top on this panel. So again, and panels, left side, right, top. Top, we need scribe. Now, scribe brings out all the functions to, to adjust. So we had a 170, I think we had 210 mil overhang on that side, the actual size of the scribe. So we do left overhang 210. Yep, exactly right. Now, we've got a cabinet, which is 926. So we need to do some calculations now. This cabinet is 800 white, 800 plus next cabinet will be 926 plus 926 plus 210 left hand. Whoops, it's gonna be too long for the board that we're doing, so we will need to do a joint. So ideally, I wanna do a joint here in the center because the material is only 2.8 meters long that I'm working with, so I can't do this the software will allow you to do as long as you tell it to, but when it comes back to getting a quote, it will start bringing errors, and these errors will not be calculated correctly. So, let's do the calculations. To overhang to the half of a door, we've got a side panel, which is 19 millimeters, plus this cabinet is 926, so 926 divided by 2 plus 19 equals 482. So now, clicking back on this cabinet, right overhang, 482. That's it. Now we are bang in the center of the door. And again, because this is adjustable, it's not doing anything to, to manufacture because these items are loose to be positioned on site wherever. Scribe shift is only again for visual. So 19 plus 2, 21. And we need to change the cladding material, which we have PM. Done. Okay, now we can just copy in exactly the same unit, release it, click on it again, and it will snap in. So we've got another unit. For this unit, we need to again do the top scribe. Actually, hang on, top scribe, we are still short from the ceiling, so we need to go up a little bit. So if we go top scribe height, uh, it was 90 millimeter coving. So we are another 10 mil below. So let's say we do 120. That's it. We pass the ceiling, which is fine. We have enough to cut down. We can do the same here. So top scribe, yet again, left overhang is gonna be half of the cabinet width, which was 926 divided by two. 463, 463, and on that side we'll have some panels and, and fascia panels to cover up the rest of the boxing. So increase, increase the scribe height to 120 as previous. We can check if we have calculated exactly by moving and zooming. We just need to shift it to be clearer. Subscribe shift 21. That's it. We are spot on. Change the material. Cladding. Done. <coughs> Pardon me. So, based on the design, what else do we need to do? We need to add a drawer unit and we need to add a panel which will be covering the boxing. 
Okay, so draw a cabinet, probably with the two doors. Looking at the measurement, it was supposed to be about 800, but what we need to make sure, we keep clearance in between. Okay, so based on that, let's go back to library, wardrobe, yet again, box is a box, draw units, and now we need to find what we need, so this would be our template. Right, let's bring it in, start modifying. So the width of this cabinet is 714 wide. Depth is going to be 580, same as all the others. Height, height 684. This is what we had in the drawings. Now, carcass material will need to change it, but draw front material, we can go back to this and select it. Uh, door material, again, same, so save me time retyping. And the carcass material we had was ST9. ST9, which is here. That's it. So we have our cabinet. But we need to position it exactly in line with the top units. So what we do now, we don't have any side panels yet, but actually let's do the side panels. Left side, we need end panel. Uh, the material changed, although we have done it, but don't worry. The system is still being developed. This is fairly new and, and we're already pushing it out there. Uh, right side, right, which we are doing right side, nothing. So front overhang, again, 21 millimeters. Back overhang, maybe 30 mil. Uh, what else we need to do? Top overhang, we don't need to. Bottom, we fine. What we are missing is the plinth. Yes. And again, plinth needs to finish exactly with the edge of the cabinet. Okay. Fine. So cladding material, let's go back, change this to PM, U702, perfect mat, come on, PM, this is the one, okay, so that's our cladding, now in order to see if everything is definitely okay, all we have to do is save the 3D project, which is going to be updating, We will be sorting these issues out in the forthcoming future. It just takes a little bit of time. So we close the project. We go back to our get quote page and we open it again. That's it. The cabinet is exactly what we needed. So we need to adjust the draw height, draw a front gap. This is normally for the inside of the wardrobes, but to show it here, the drawer drops down and you've got a 30 mil gap. I mean, you wouldn't be doing that on this type of cabinet, but somewhere else you can. So draw quantity, runner type soft close or could be push open. Draw runner length. This is a maximum depth runner, which can fit into the cabinet depth that we have pre-selected. So what do we need to do? Draw front height. That's it. Draw front options. Plane. Let's draw front height. Ah, sorry. Still learning myself. Right, we need this to be 150. Changed. Okay, so now the cabinet is 172 millimeters away from the wall. That means we need to position this 172 away from the wall. And as all the others, we had 20 millimeters. The material's gone again. Never mind, we'll get it back. So this cabinet requires a worktop as well. If we click back on it, and panel scribes and plims, we have an option for worktop. Yes. Now the worktop has the same overhangs. I don't know what my distance is, but I can measure. If I switch on tape measure and measure from 
end panel from this point here to this point here it's 119 so that's how much I need to overhang it and I need to remember that I've got another 19 mil so 119 119 plus 19 that means 1138 overall overhang switch the measurements off click on the cabinet left overhang 1138 worked up left overhang 1138 oh come on right for some reason we have a bit of a issue but let's see if we can sort it out let's update the project hopefully within a month or two this video is being recorded in in february beginning of february by april all these issues will disappear so let's close the project and then we'll open it back up which materials will get itself sorted All right let's try to edit it draw a work top left overhang 1138 that's it now we're back in business as they say right overhang i don't need to overhang anything because we're going to have another panel going there and we just need to change the material which worked up was uh, u702 pm 19 mil cashmere that's a bugger Right, being so efficient as we are, glitch is already sorted. So now let's get back to work. Let's modify the unit. So what we need to do is to do a front overhang, which again was 21 millimeters. Ah, okay, not completely sorted, but will be. Uh, so 25 mil front overhang. We need to do the back overhang of another 30. To make sure we have same as everywhere else and right overhang is done side panel left side side panel front overhang 21 it is done let's click on it again done next measurement back that's it right so now to get everything back to normal, save, update, close, we're still missing an under panel on top of the wall units and a side panel. So hopefully a few more minutes and we'll be done. Sorry it's taking so long, but normally it would be quicker if I was to do it in peace and quiet, but I need to explain quite a few things. So everything is exactly as it should be so now we just need to close off this side let's go back to library now into components panels let's go here l post okay we can use this one now we can rotate it this is what we have so overall height Overall cabinets, we had 1800 plus, for ease of calculation, 750. So 2550. And rotate mirror 180 degrees. Okay, let's position it like this. Nope, like this. Okay, the reason why we've done that. We need to see how it's been joined. Okay, now it's exactly how I need it. Okay, the height, 2550. Uh, width, width of it, we are trying to cover, what we are trying to cover, we are trying to cover 120. Actually, we can see once we position it. So let's do the width, let's say 200 and depth 580 plus 
580 plus 30 plus 90 mil on the front equals 629, which 629. Right, that's what we have created. Now we need to position it in place. So it's 172, but I don't need to work under this measurement. 1940. 1940 plus the width of the cabinet, which is 926, equals 2866. 2866. Whoops, done the wrong cabinet. Never mind. Luckily, this can snap in place. This is the one that we need to adjust. These mistakes will happen. It happens even to the best of us. So, need to get used to it. The more we use it, the better we get. Okay, 2866, which is here, and I needed zero, which is here, and I need this actually to go all the way, or maybe we will do the allowance with the scribe. So now let's check if it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Actually, not exactly where it's supposed to be, so we need to alter it. Okay, maybe I have miscalculated somewhere. Where did I miscalculate, huh? It's not allowing me to do the oversize, that's why. So width, let's do, say, a 120 plus 20, 140. 140. Now, still have some room, so I can increase it to 150, and it should snap in place just like that. And I could still have it slightly bigger. Let's, let's measure from this point to the wall. Still 22 millimeters. Okay. 22, let's click on it again, so 150 plus 22, 172, 172, and let's get it exactly where it belongs, 11 mil should be zero, that's it, so this panel is placed exactly where it needed to be. Let's do the material. So we had U702PM changed and let's extend this scribe all the way to the back. So right overhang, side panels, right side, no, top, top right overhang, let's say another 180 millimeters. That's it. This panel will go back and it will be cut to be to finish flush with everything else, but that's that's a job on site. I don't want to do it exactly because I know I need to have it bigger. There will be other components coming up soon where they will be a little bit more flexible where they finish and where they snap and so on and so on. So let's save the project update okay let's go into view mode to check if we have what we need okay so as you can see doors are down to allow for uh, handle free opening which is by 40 millimeters normally it could be 20 we have a drawer which works if we want to measure how high the drawer will be we can do that let me just position it so I can see it clearly and let's try to bring some measurements out right so from this point to this point here right so inside of the drawer is working out to be 54 millimeters if I want it bigger not a problem back to edit mode maybe then we need to make the drawer 170 millimeters, which will give us 20 mil extra inside. 
changes are instant. Done. That's it. The room is designed. Now we just need to get a price for it. So the final step is save it. Before saving it, you can actually keep the doors open, closed, etc. We can go to edit mode and maybe we can open this and maybe here and here and maybe here. Oh, we've got three shelves. Okay, let's get rid of we only needed one shelf on this cabinet. So drawer components, shelf components, shelves only one. Done. Do not forget to put the names for the units. So we can call it tall left side as everything will show up on the labels and it will be easier to trace the panels uh, meaning which panel will go to which cabinet so uh, wall above tall here is a just a wall hung wall hung one let's leave the space Copy. This one here will be wall hung two, <coughs> and here we call right side, right side L post. The bottom one we can call it draw unit. That's it. All the parts will be referenced. Uh, side panels, plinth, worktop is going to come under the name of a, how did the name this? Draw unit. So again, you will know exactly what is what. Done. Edit mode. The material changed again, but never mind. Nothing bad will happen. We'll see if any materials are going to be different to what we have selected. So I can zoom in. Now to present this for the customers or even yourself as a visual, you can Go to screenshot, take a picture, and the picture will be saved anywhere you like. So that's it. This is my screenshot. Let's zoom in. Oops, out of the way. Done. Save again. Update. Close. If I want to update the picture because of these tiny little minor errors is still coming up with the different colors. So again, edit project. Once the errors have been sorted, we'll change the video. That's it. We have exactly what we need. Save again. Update. Close. And all we have to do now is get quote. Get quote. Based on, on same calculation method as 2D, cut to size, etc. Everything works exactly in the same way. So we can check, check where the prices are coming from. Board summary will show how many boards are being used for this project. So we've got one, two, three number 19 mil. These two panels do not fit and they are end panel and door right, we can't really throw them out, but if there is another cabinet that you need to build using same materials, that means you will use this board up and cost-wise, it's not gonna be as much because the material is already there. Or maybe for instance, you're doing some other shelving, like client wanted to have a shelf on the left-hand side boxing. So I can add another shelf and we're gonna be cutting it from the same, same material. So let's say that shelf is going to be a meter by, it was 170 deep, so we want a little bit of overhang, maybe 10 mil, so let's say 180, one, as it was going up against the wall, so realistically it's only two sides that will be visible, boxing lid cover, habit of putting descriptions in will only make your life easier when getting delivery and tracing which panel is which, especially if you will not be the one doing the install. 
if there will be some other guys receiving the goods and need to install it, then at least they know where things need to go. So one mil. Uh, let's say we do three sides. I don't know which side I'm going to be flipping. Add edging. Again, if I press get quote, this panel should appear somewhere around here. And yet again, board summary. It changed the layout. 1000 by 80. This is the panel. That's where it pushed it in. It's still there. We still got plenty of material. Unless we can use it, it's fine. You can keep it as the offcut, or, or if it's going to stay with us, basically it's just going to end up being in a bin. So edge banding, this is how many meters of edge banding we are doing, the cost, machining, machining is pre-drilling of holes required for the cabinets, etc, etc. So shelving units, scribes, you've got all these costs, which is how much to prepare for a manual assembly, which doesn't look like a great deal, looks okay to me. And the next step that we need to look is ironmongery. Ironmongery, we will supply everything you require to assemble the cabinets. Wall hung brackets, wall hung rail, adjustable shelf pins, screws, bits, bobs, door buffers, everything. So if we scroll down, this is the whole cost for the ironmongery. Draw runners, all the fittings we supply are top quality. Quadro 4D V6 silent system, 30 kilograms. These are very good runners and silent. So that's it. I think I've had enough of your attention and, and it was the longest ever video we have done. So for now, our project is done and we have a price for it. And if you would like to go ahead, all you need to do is just click Add to Cart. We've got the quote, back to general summary, Add to Cart, proceed with the payment, uh, select if you want delivery or, or collection, and it's good to go. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye.